if you've ever been in the military and you've been voluntold to volunteer, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I specifically want to know what event it was for. Probably benefited the community, but it's not really volunteering when you are forced to do it. Nonetheless, uh, we are here. Guys, welcome uh, to another video. Uh, if you are looking to help the channel, the biggest thing is actually commenting. Uh, your comments actually help uh, my kind of rankings. So the comment section is actually a very good thing, as terrible as it has become. So uh, get down there and find out why these videos are famous, which is the comment section, which is literally a lawless wasteland, um, pretty much Mad Max. If you are looking for other ways to help the channel, uh, support Gun Mag Warehouse guys. They support this channel monetarily. They help me out. All they ask is that you buy magazines, discount code Grantham. If not that, LEX ammo or Vertex for ammunition or sick plaid. Again, that's going to be discount code Grantham, which is actually 25% off on Vertex. So that's cool. We are done with that. Today, we are going to be talking about Triarch. Now, if you've followed the channel for a while or maybe if you've just watched a couple videos, you've probably seen that I've done a video on a Triarch gun already, and that was the uh, Triarch AR-15 that they made, which I'm uh, a big fan of. I really thought that they did good things with it. So today we're going to be talking about another Triarch firearm, and that one is going to be the Triarch Tri-11, which is a 2011. Now, if you're not familiar with what a 2011 is, um, take a 1911. If you're not familiar with what a 1911 is, take one of the most uh, <laughs> revered slash hated handguns in American history and uh, bring it to the modern age, and you get the 2011 essentially. So it's a double stack um, firearm that uses uh, a lot of the 1911 uh, type mechanisms and triggers and that type of stuff. So you get a lot of the benefits of the 1911, but we're kind of modernizing it. We're giving it that nice high cap mag, high cap, big quotation marks, uh, 17 round magazine, so 17 plus one, um, great triggers, all that kind of stuff, and we're making it modern. So this particular gun is 100% made in Texas and they're very proud of that. And if you've ever talked to somebody from Texas, if you ever notice that there's always a guy in your unit who's like super gung-ho about Texas, uh, we have a dude like that. Just every time you mention anything, uh, just Texas comes up and it's just, I don't know. And it seems like if they're a Marine that it's like doubly so, like they're very proud of it. They have like the hat and the flag and the boots, but if they're in their army, they've got like just ridiculous Texan tattoos. I don't know what it is. Military is such a weird place. Anyhow, um, again, manufactured in Texas, 100%, uh, hand fit slides. Um, there is a transferable lifetime warranty. Pretty cool. As far as my relationship with Triarch, uh, before we get into it. So, Pistol was given to me, the AR-15 was given to me that they made. Um, besides that, I've done a helicopter hog hunt with them, which was through uh, uh, Last Shadow, pretty cool little event. So, uh, you know, I want to be transparent with what that is. Now, those events are, aren't meant to buy me, it's, you know, my reviews or anything like that. Maybe reviews are never bought or paid for, but rather it's just that uh, in the industry uh, to be able to do everything, uh, you have to either have to be like incredibly rich, which I am not, or you have to have companies pay for it to get to that experience. So Triarch's always been cool with me. Um, they've always worked with me on that type of stuff. So just for full disclosure, so they gave me the gun. Uh, they also gave me th uh, 3K rounds to shoot through it. So I put all 3K plus about another K of my own ammunition through it. So about 4,000 rounds on it. Um, and we're going to talk about our experiences with this particular firearm. So uh, let's get into it. The biggest thing I can say about this first off is the question is who's making it? Um, I'm not huge into the 1911 world. I want to point that out right off the bat. And I'm sure the 1911 forums guys or the 1911 fanatics are going to hop in and boohoo me. But um, 1911s are cool guns, great guns, all that type of stuff. But I don't know a whole lot about them. But uh, suffice to say that some big names in the 1911 2011 community uh, are making these and contributed to this. So this is a well designed gun. I know it's always kind of weird when you have a company. Uh, that's not like Wilson Combat or LeBear or something like that, coming in and making like a 1911 or a 2011. It's like, where'd they come from? Who are they? What do they do? I get it, but there are there's a lot of history behind the people who are making these guns, so rest assured that they have the credentials to make these and do these. Um, so first off, the biggest thing when it comes to this particular uh, firearm is the slide-to-frame fit. It is 
literally out of control. Um, I've never felt a weapon that cycles as smoothly as the Tri-11 does. Um, I've just never felt it. It's almost like, again, I wish you could do the ghost thing where like, you know, I put my hands over yours in the movie and we'd cycle it together. We'll do the trigger. But um, it's kind of like you take two magnets, you know, and you put like the North Poles on both magnets together and you try to rub them together, but they just don't, won't connect. They'll just kind of slide across each other. That's, I'm not even joking. That's almost what the slide to frame fit feels like. Um, when I say it's ridiculous, it is um, probably to date one of the nicest um, uh, fits I've ever felt on a 2011-1911. Uh, just phenomenal. So that does contribute a lot into the recoil impulse, which we'll talk about later. But first things off, slide to frame fit, which is hand done, is phenomenal. Okay. Moving deeper into the gun, let's talk about the barrel. The barrel is the heart of any gun. Uh, this barrel is very good. They use a track barrel. If you know anything about Triarch, you know they're really hot on track barrels. So track barrels use something called single edge polygonal uh, rifling. So essentially what, it's, what it does, again, I'm not an engineer, I'm just a shooter, I pull triggers and stuff, is it, there's less biting into the bullet, but it creates a better gas seal. Essentially, you're getting less deformation of the bullet, which is supposed to, in theory, allow it to uh, fly straighter and more accurate and lead to more accuracy and all that type of stuff. Um, have I seen a huge difference between like track barrels and like other really well-made barrels? Um, that's hard to say because I'm not like a huge accuracy guy. You know, my guns are always more accurate than me. So that's something that's really hard to quantify. I will say that this gun is uh, exceptionally accurate. Um, I've definitely been able to easily put the same round into the same hole and make a little quill release and all that type of stuff. I also did a 360 yard shot onto a 16 inch steel plate with this particular gun. Uh, so it works very well, it's very accurate. Now I wanna point out that it did take me a little bit because I am using iron sights which were like quadruple the size of the target at 360. But uh, the point is that the gun's inherent accuracy is great. Uh, there's not going to be any issues there. The gun's going to outshoot you is what I'm kind of getting at. Punch in. I'll, you got to punch in. I'll. Hard left. Oh! Barely f missed it to the left. You hit it. There it is. You hit it dead center. Okay, moving up from the slide frame finish, from the barrel all the way to the sights. So sights are Dawson Precision. Excellent choice. Um, Dawson Precision 10.8. Any of those sights are just going to be awesome. I also want to point out that with the Triarch 2011, that everything's pretty much customizable. You can kind of get whatever you want on this. Um, kind of like this finish that I have on the gun. So the finish is kind of this a multicam black kind of esque finish, and it just looked good. And I just I wanted something different. Don't judge my life and my life choices. Um, anyhow, it's extremely durable. Um, you know, I'm getting a teeny bit of wear at the edges there, but that's pretty typical um, for the amount of holster draws that I've had from a gun, uh, from a firearm. I'm going to see that kind of wear with any type of firearm that I'm using, whether that be a Glock, a CZ, or in this case, the Triarch uh, 2011. So exceptionally, exceptionally dur durable, uh, no issues there. One of the best parts about a 1911 is the trigger. So. 1911s, it's kind of like the base by which all pistols are kind of judged off of. Whenever somebody uh, picks up a pistol and they pull the trigger, they're always like, well, it's not quite a 1911 trigger. And I think I've said the exact same thing. And it's because 1911 triggers are exceptionally short, they're exceptionally crisp, and they're exceptionally light with a very short reset. What this means is that you have to try less with the gun. So when I'm getting into the 2011, the Tri-11, and I'm shooting it and that type of thing, I really have to focus less on my trigger pull and just shoot the gun. A uh, heavier trigger pull is going to mean that you're going to be imparting more force to the gun. There's a greater chance that as you're pulling that trigger, that gun's going to go left or right or something. It's a really classic phenomenon with the Glock where a lot of people tend to pull like low left with the Glock or low right and that depending on what hand they are because the Glock triggers are just a teeny bit heavy and a little bit of creep and a little bit of travel. So when I say that this trigger is phenomenal, um, that's even speaking on 1911s in general. This trigger is very nice. Now you have a couple options. You have flat or curved. I went with flat. Um, from using Geyser triggers, the uh, super dynamic combat and stuff, I'm a big fan of the flat trigger. So that's kind of what I, what I went with. Um, either is going to serve you well, just find one. But the point is they're around 3.2, I think it's like 3 to 3.5. Mine's measured around 3.2 or so pounds. Uh, which is uh, exceptionally light, but not so light that like I'm barely touching it and the thing's going off. I still have a little bit of travel and take up, 
before I depress that hammer. But uh, if you guys could be there with me to feel that reset, the reset is just out of control. So we'll, we'll do the whole ghost scene. So pretend your hands around mine and let's see here. So we have the trigger pull. Okay. Weapon cycles. Let's let that up. Oh, just so nice. It's a very tactile, very positive reset. The trigger wants to go forward when you're releasing it. So it's a very quick gun. Um, in fact, I can easily get about 0 0.14, 0 0.13 splits on this particular gun. That's pretty fast. It's about only a tad shorter, uh, slower than I am with like a well-tuned AR-15 with like a Geisley trigger or an AR gold trigger or something like that. So that's saying a lot. This gun is very fast and that's due to many um, things kind of going into it. But especially due to its exceptional trigger. So good on them for that. So a lot of people are big fans of the 1911 grip angle. It's a lot less severe than a Glock. So Glock tends to have that really aggressive grip and it's good because you can really get into the firearm and really put rounds you know, down, really control that gun. But a lot of people find it unnatural and hard to kind of keep the gun on target. So a lot of people tend to like this grip angle. I'm with them. I personally prefer the 1911 grip angle. That being said, uh, I shoot Glocks the most, so I've definitely dealt with it and trained through it. But um, it is very natural just to bring this gun up to your eyes. There's just, there's no effort when it comes to it. So 1911 grip angle is always great. The grips themselves are textured, contoured. They feel good. One thing that I, like about this gun is that some 1911 companies like really overdo the magazine well where it's just like enormous i kind of like the more subdued magazine well it's very glock like um and that's good that's exactly what i want because of the magazine has a little taper to it that's very easy to insert it in by the way these are dummy rounds so it's very easy to get those reloads they're really quick because of that magazine well all right so moving down um safety so 1911s do have manual safeties this one is ambidextrous um simple Positive, easy, as soon as you draw the gun with an ALS holster, you're pretty much disengaging the safety right away, so there's no big deal there. The slide stop has always been a problem for me in 1911s, and that's because of the way I gripped the gun a little bit off center from the center of my forearm. I know, uh, you know, great pistol guys will be angry about that, but the point is, is that when I'm doing my reloads, I kind of have to break my grip a little bit to hit that magazine release. So there's two different ways to kind of get around it. So when you're reloading the 2011, uh, the first way you can do it is you're firing, 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 gun goes dry, you're releasing the mag. By the way, mag's release is in a great position. I've never hit it accidentally. So typically what I do is I kind of break my grip a little bit so I can get my hand on the slide stop, insert the magazine, depress the slide stop, and I get the gun loaded up. Now, another option that some people like to do is that if they don't like to break their grip, which I think is actually a pretty good point, then what you can do is you can simply load the gun, and once you've loaded the gun, your thumb is right there at the slide stop, release it with that thumb, and then you're up. That way you're not breaking your grip with your right hand if that's your dominant hand. So there are a couple options there. Uh, kind of find which one works best for you. 1911s are kind of a little quirky when it comes to that. We've talked a lot about the features of this gun and all that type of stuff. Rail, I have a Surefire X300 on it. Um, what does it feel like to shoot? Um, exceptionally smooth. Um, because of that slide to frame fit, this gun just, just knows where it's going and it's very nice to shoot. Um, the, the recoil pattern is very predictable. Uh, when it, the slide is coming home, it's bringing the gun right back onto target. Again, follow-up shots with this are very easy and precise and the gun's very accurate. So this thing is an absolute dream to shoot. There's no doubt about it. Now, some of that um, nice recoil impulse and all that kind of comes from the weight, which is a con. So we've talked about pros, let's hit cons really quick. Uh, this thing is heavy. If you're used to Glocks and that type of thing, this thing's gonna feel like a brick. And that's not to say that that's a you know, problem with the gun, that's kind of more to the design of the 1911s. They're just heavier than traditional firearms that we've, uh, that were used in the past because obviously all metal construction or at least mostly metal construction is going to mean that this thing's just going to be heavier than your mostly polymer framed glock um that being said that weight does add that really nice recoil impulse so the problem kind of comes into play as far as like what is your purpose with this gun what are you doing with this gun because if if this gun if you want to use this for like duty use and we'll talk about that in a moment um and this isn't your primary weapon, that could be a problem because this is a lot of weight to have for a secondary weapon. 
So maybe kind of consider something else. Now, if this is going to be used as a primary or competition and something like that, it might not be as noticeable with the weight, but just be aware that you're going to have more weight on your hip in that holster. And that weight, especially when you're running, is going to be swinging a little bit. So make sure you have a good holster that's secured well, uh, you know, with a single leg strap or it's high on your hip or something like that. Um, just be aware of that when it comes to this firearm. And the biggest con to this Tri-11 is the price. This thing is stupid expensive. It's a $3,000 um, or 2999 So funny enough, uh, when it comes to like custom firearms, that's really not a whole lot nowadays, which is insanity, by the way. But it's still a lot of money. $3,000 is still a lot to drop on a pistol. Now, do you get like a super premium 2011? Yeah, absolutely. And again, that's kind of going to be up to you guys on whether or not that's worth it in your book. But just realize that there is a price tag that comes along with this. And that price tag definitely buys you uh, a phenomenal handgun. Uh, again, it's just see if that kind of fits within your budget. Don't stretch yourself to buy this because I'd rather you buy like a Glock and then shoot like, you know, you know $2,600 worth of ammo instead of spending $3,000 on this and then not having any money for ammo. So that comes down to you and your budget and what you can kind of fit in. But it definitely does buy you a premium firearm. Okay, reliability. So I know this is gonna be kind of the big kind of showstopper is reliability. So a Glock, on in general, a 1911 slash 2011 design is not going to be as reliable as a Glock. Cue the haters just swelling up from the comment section. And it just comes down to, you know, slide to frame fit. It's just due to the design, you're gonna get it's gonna be easier for this gun to gunk up, especially when you get debris in there and that type of thing over a Glock. Now that's not to say that the 2011 or the 1911 is an unreliable weapon. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm rather pointing out is that how reliable the Glocks are, how just utterly stupid reliable they are, how well they run and that type of thing. So believe me, I'm not saying that these guns are unreliable, just understand where I'm coming from on that. Now, a couple things about 2011s. I've heard a lot of talk online. Uh, I haven't seen it in person. Of of magazines having problems. So the magazines that they send with it are STI magazines. They're nitrided, uh, super smooth going in. I haven't had any troubles with them, but some people have said that they have had issues with STI mags. They've had to gut them and put in different internals or that they over insert on 2011s. Again, these are all things that I have not not seen in the 4,000 or so rounds that I've put through this firearm. But just be aware um, that based on the amount of people that I've seen talking about this, I'm not sure if this if it's just like institutional inertia and people just kind of talk about it, but it's something I wanted to point out in case it was an issue for you guys. Um, but again, that's something that I have not had uh, happen in all the rounds that I've had through my personal 2011. Let's take it for what it's worth. What's the conclusion of this gun? What do I think of it? I think that you are getting uh, probably one of the nicest 2011s on the market right now, 9mm. Uh, this gun runs like crazy. This gun shoots like crazy. This gun is easy to control, easy to fire super fast, easy to fire at range. This is the ultimate competition gun. Now, is this the ultimate duty gun? That depends, like I said. Now, is this going to be a secondary weapon? Maybe not the best option, but if this is going to be your primary option and you are okay with dealing with the weight and the possible problems, knowing that it might not be quite as reliable as a Glock, this might be a really good option for you guys. But the point is, is that this is a really good firearm and whether or not it fits you and what you're doing is going to depend on what you do. So check it out. They should be at a couple gun shops out there. Uh, get a feel for it. If you can shoot it before you buy it, especially when you put in this type of investment, Triarch is a great company. I just want to say that they are good people. Uh, who back their guns and you won't be disappointed in buying a firearm for them or from dealing with them. So that's about as much as I can say about it, guys. Just this has been super fun to shoot. So if it's within the budget, buy it, guys. And uh... again, shooting this gun fast is not going to happen unless you get training. I know I hit harp on it every time, but get training get it. So there's a couple places you can get training from. Haley Strategic, Esoteric, Bear Solutions, um, Cogworks, all great companies. Check them out. Get that training. I'm actually going to be at the Bear Solutions class in October, and I'm going to be at the Cogworks class with Haley Strategic uh, in October as well. So 
uh, you know, come see me if you if you're there. If not, if it's this, you watch this video afterwards, no big deal. But no, I'm at these courses, getting training actively myself because I want to be the best shooter as, as I possibly can. And there's always something to learn, no matter how advanced you are. So get out there, get that training, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. Look cool, do good things. I've got nothing else for you. I see a lot of people who are uh, who just kind of. They get home and after a day at work and they, or they get to the weekend and they just kind of lounge and watch TV. And there's nothing wrong with watching TV and watching movies. But I want to point out to you guys and say that there is so much in the world to see that if you can cut a little bit of TV out, I think you'll be happier in your life. Because there's a lot to see and a lot to experience. And I'm a big guy on getting cool experiences. Because again, products and that type of thing are cool. But that's not something that makes you an interesting person. What makes you interesting are, are your you know, combined experiences that you've had that have shaped kind of the way you think. So get out there and get those experiences. Do those cool things, guys. I know I kind of harp on it a lot. But I want to point it out again. Do cool things with your life. Uh, there's no reason not to. It doesn't even cost money. Just if... if somewhere to go hike as far away, then hike to there instead of driving there. And if you watch to this point, again, we're going to put out a nice tag for Big Daddy Unlimited. Again, weird name, subscription service. You get super cheap products by subscribing. Is it going to be worth it for you? Depends on how much you buy. Uh, if you're buying a couple products a year, yes. If you're buying nothing, probably not. If you're just buying one product, it depends. But they are going to be the cheapest prices you can find. Again, that's going to be anything from Farms, ammo, all that type of stuff, uh, optics. Famously, they've had optics for super cheap. So check it out, guys. I have a link just right below. But yeah, that's all I got for you. And finally, comment with your favorite video game pre-2000. If you're born after the year 2000, you're going to have to do a little bit of searching to find that one. Take care, guys. Mine is Half-Life by far.